What's going on everyone? It's Peter Byram here and today we are with another one of our amazing members of the Next Level Photography training program. Today we've got, uh, we've got James Kern with us of James Kern Photography. James, super excited to have you on with us today, man. You, you have an amazing story. It's been a pleasure working <laughs> with you and uh, really excited to get into all of that. Uh, why don't we just kick this off with like, tell us a little bit about you and your business. Yeah, um, I guess I'm about four years into into kind of the profession. Ah, three years. I guess three years into like taking money for photography. Um, because it's, that's that's the I've been doing it longer, but yeah, three years into taking money for photography professionally. Uh, prof professional. Yeah, um, <laughs> that works too. You could say that too. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and so, um, you know, I was kind of finding my sea legs and everything like that, finding what I wanted to shoot. Um, and one thing that was, you know, uh, you know, I, I was lucky to do everything. I did, and I still do everything. Birthday parties, kids, headshots. And that's where I started, actors' headshots. Um, boudoir, I mean, I find myself shooting a lot more of everything than a lot of people that I know. And um, and I really want to, I, I, I treasure the fact that I've been able to hold on to that. That, that diversity and that variety, right? And that's on top of, of course, the fact that I'm a professional actor uh, as well. So that's definitely, I got into photography to try and balance and manage that. And it's working out pretty well. That's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, we got a lot to talk about, but let's kind of really start at like a high level. So you are an actor, right? And yeah. you also are a photographer. So you do both. And what was, like, before we started working together, what was really the main challenge or what was the real, like, the thing that you were trying to solve in your photography business? Yeah, so before, so before sort of connecting and meeting with you, I think the, the big struggle was the caliber of clientele, right? Wanting clients who appreciate and value the work that you do um, the same way that you do, right? That are willing to and understand the value in purchasing high quality material and aren't constantly trying to undercut you and put you in corners where, put you in positions where your work is going to suffer and they're not going to value it at the end of the day. So, you know, clients who really know why they're paying what they're paying to get what they want. Mm. And, sure. Yeah. So, so that was, that was sort of my cross, crossing road before meeting you. It was like really wanting to move away from the, the smaller, sort of budget people. Got it. So how were you getting clients back in the day? Back in yeah. the day, 45 days ago. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, 45 days ago. Uh, was a lot of thumbtack and then trying to get what referrals I could. I, you know, I took some swings at Facebook ads and Google ads, just the stuff that they gave me for free. Like, nothing happened. There. Um, and, uh, and that was fine. I mean, Thumbtack was working. Thumbtack was 50000 for me in the year, right? So it, it was working. It doesn't work for everyone. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure what set me apart from everyone, but um, it, it was working for me. But it was introducing me to those lower, those lower sort of uh, lower paying, kind of not quite as aware of what they wanted clientele. Um, so, yeah. That answer that? Yeah, yeah. Because you... Like at that point, you were charging less than you are now, right? Um, on what for weddings? Uh, oh, for weddings. Yeah. 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 If the con the, yeah, the, yeah. The conversation with weddings. Absolutely, I was charging less. Um, I was undervaluing what I was shooting. Yeah. Yeah. So, you were ch back then. You were charging what for a wedding typically on average? I think like two thousand range. Yeah, and now there. now where are you at? Uh, three. Three, yeah, five. three, thirty five hundred, somewhere in that range, yeah. And so why like why do you think that what enabled you to raise your prices, like on that end? I think I mean, truthfully, it, it is it is that targeted messaging, right? It is that direct messaging, being able to to reach out specifically, like with Thumbtack or anything like that, all you're doing is saying, I am a photographer, here's my stuff, you're interested in this job, so it looks like you kind of like me, here's my profile, maybe I can do something for you, right? And they're skeptical and they're getting quotes from a bunch of, bunch of different people. But with this, it's, it's, here is this thing, this is what you're looking for. If you click this, you will get what you want. And then they click that, 
And I'm like, oh, this is what I want. And then that's where the conversation starts, right? It's like, this is what I want, right off the bat. It's there, and there's no sort of room for skepticism or anything like that. It's, it's kind of from the get-go, exactly what they're looking for. Got it. Okay. So I definitely, I want to get into all that in just a sec. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit briefly about, like, how did you first come across me? <laughs> I think I was in your funnel. <laughs> I did, like, I, yeah, it was, it was, um, yeah, you just popped up. And it was interesting because as photographers who, who, if, if you're a working photographer, you've seen these ads pop up either for a camera, you get three things, camera equipment, uh, how to get better at photography and how to get better at your business, right? Those are the three things that pop up on your right. Facebook ad. And Peter Byram, how to get better at your business popped up on mine. And I kid you not, I don't pay attention to any of those things, but for some, I don't know. I honestly cannot tell you what it was. And now I feel like I'm one of my own wedding clients. I cannot tell you why I clicked on it, but I clicked on it. <laughs> I clicked on it as someone who wasn't even necessarily that interested in becoming a wedding photographer, right? Like that wasn't even really my motive. And that's also still not necessarily how I would define myself, right. but it's definitely to a large part of my income, which is really, really awesome. Um, so, and then, yeah, just kind of reading about the system and everything like that. Like that's, that's what sort of, made me decide to just hail Mary reach out to you. Yeah. Yep. So I remember that. So then we got on a call, right? Yeah. And, and then what happened? <laughs> we got on a call and you know, uh, you did your thing. You're great. You're nice. You're, you're very good at what you do. Uh, you, I heard everything that I wanted to hear. Um, and, and I mean, it was, it, it was super appealing, right? The whole notion of having a six figure, you know, you ask me what you want, what do you want? Six figure, sure. Income. Great. And then you sort of laid out the steps about how to achieve that. You put in perspective that three weddings, four weddings, no, three weddings a month, and you're at your number, right? Like, whoa. Like All it's, of a sudden, like it's right there. Yeah. Cool. Like, that's like 36, that's like 36 days of work, not including editing, but like immediate days of wedding work like in a year. Okay. Like, cool. I can right. get into that. Um, and yeah, and I got, I, I very much, but more than anything, I very much so got this sense that there could be the possibility of just improving the whole general working and dynamic and uh, caliber of my of my brand. Of mm. Okay, yeah. but if I remember correctly, when we when we first connected, you weren't totally sure, right? Um, you, let, let's talk a little bit about that. Like, yeah. So I I have met like <laughs> I have always been one who's been like hesitant for, for larger purchases, right? Try and research everything to the end degree. Watch 10 million YouTube videos about this one sort of shutter component on a camera, right? Like try and find everything so that I know when it shows up, when I purchase it, it is exactly what I wanted. Because also as, as photographers, we're subjected to scams so often and people just trying to run away with your money. And like if I buy a product and I don't like it and it doesn't work for me, that's one thing. But if I just get taken for a run, like there's nothing that hurts your pride or or just your business more. Like your sense of like self and, and, and your sense of trust for other people. Uh, and the thing is I've never been scammed. So that's like the craziest thing about it. It's this fear of that, I guess. Um, it's such a we it's such a human thing, right? Like we're all afraid. Like you see this ad on Facebook and you're like, wait, can this really be true? There's like is right. this some elaborate scheme just to like rip me off? Like right? Exactly. Yeah. And, and I and I tell you, I went down the freaking rabbit hole, man. Like, I, you know, I, I researched you to the end I found out you were an actor. I found some high school pictures, I think. I found your wedding website, which I told you was still up. Uh, I found your co the company your parents work at or that started or whatever. And then you, is, it's like, I, yeah, I went in and I was like, okay, is there any way that this guy's like some like back channels, secret money stealer person? I don't even know what I thought it was. But um, turns out, turns out you were not. So what? Uh, I, that, a lot of that was motivated by the fear of like a big ticket item that's not necessarily a tangible product, right? Like the concept or the idea of improvement, like right? the possibility for improvement. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Um, so so and it's a lot more ahead. ethereal. No, I was just saying that's a lot more ethereal, which makes yeah. it hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but like, okay, that all that being said, what ultimately led you to just be like, all right, I'm pulling the trigger, I'm doing this, I'm taking the leap. I mean, 
it was a gut decision. You know, it was it was the possibility. I mean, it was it was everything you'd you know, it's everything we talked about as far as like the potential for growth and the ways I could see my business, right? And I got the sense. I think the biggest defining factor was the fact that if I, as skeptical as I am, clicked and got this far in this process, he must be good at selling something. And this system that he utilizes must really work. And so the whole notion that if you can sell me to this point, then I believe that you can help me understand how to sell my product and that's into the group. Right. You saw how paid traffic and funnels were working, even though you didn't like fully understand it at that point. You were like, yeah. there's something about this here that's working, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So you signed up, joined Next Level, and then what happened? And I disappeared into my cave for like 15 days. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I started going through the modules, burning through them as quickly as I could. Um, not as quickly, I should, I should say as thoroughly as I could. Um, and I sat around in organic for a long time before actually moving to paid ads, which I know is what you suggest anyway. Um, I really, I built that, uh, I built that whole, you know, the Facebook group and everything like that. And I really established that. And I really learned what it was to reach out to people. It's a cold, cold ad people and cold, like reach out to people. And, you know, it's funny, Peter will tell you this if you sign up or whatever, but it's like, it is a weird feeling. And it's funny seeing people in the group just recently who are like freaked out and scared about adding people. I now look it back. I was like, oh, so cute. Uh, that used to be me. Um, but it's true. And so, yeah, I, I sort of started to begin to inhabit this mindset of like a little bit of fear, fearlessness, a little bit of like, not, un, I'm not saying like untouchable, but it's like this reality that like there are 7 billion people in this world and like, so many of them are on Facebook, and if you add or send a friend request or send a message, and it doesn't go how you want, man, that's like, it's not even a drop in the ocean. It's, it, it's below that. So really realizing it sort of gives you this kind of invincibility. And and through that, as also at the same time, as coming from someone who, I had a lot more work on my plate as coming from someone who wasn't necessarily a full-time wedding photographer prior to sort of investing with you, which was also a big kind of... yeah. What the hell was I thinking? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so I had to kind of like reformat and redevelop my website and really get it streamlined. But in that same sort of way, knowing that this is how you're going to be introducing your product, like in knowing that this is the funnel and knowing that this is the format for Facebook ads and this campaign and that whole concept, knowing that and then actually being a retroactively like craft your website to coincide and sort of like line up with that actually was a great gift because it was like now I can really have this sort of seamless connection between the two. Mm, nice. Yeah. Yeah, so the first thing you did, I want to drill down on this a little bit. So you, you jumped into the program, you got started and you said you just like went into a cave, right? For like yes. fifteen days. Why'd you do that? Um because the sheets told me to. <laughs> uh, oh did I lose you? You're frozen. Oh no you're not. We're good? Okay. We're good? Okay. Yeah, why did I do that? Uh, because it's, I mean, it was. It was, what, it was what was suggested in the program, right? Like, don't don't back out. And also, like, I had made this investment. There was no chance I wasn't going to, like, put everything I could into this and, and do as much work as I had to. And I also saw how behind I was as far as what I needed to establish and create. So, like, um, yeah, I mean, I, it was just, it was simply a matter of adding people, contacting, communicating, getting the whole sense of the conversation, the flow, everything like that, and kind of, really trying to make it as second nature as possible. Mm -hmm. The actions of creating the routine. Like I rescheduled my entire like Yeah, I remember that. What is this? Like I had I had before before this, my count here, I'm gonna do this. Read it. <laughs> before that, like my average calendar looked like one thing on a day. Now this is what my calendar looks like. Yeah. Nice. I had no structure. I had I you know, I have bed written, <laughs> and I go to bed written on my phone. I've scheduled in time for when I plan my day. Um, but that has actually been instrumental as far as like structuring and creating structure for why I've been able to be successful this month and why I've been able to maintain that success and not just drown under all of this, right? Mm. You know, it's, so I was, I was kind of reinventing a lot of my lifestyle, a lot of the way I thought about my business. That was why it took so much time. Yeah, it's a really interesting thing because I think a lot of times people think it's like, I just need to learn Facebook ads. 
right? Or I just need to learn how to like, I just need to learn this one little thing. I need to know the proper script or whatever. But we find out that it's actually like we need to kind of grow and evolve as a human being to become the person that gets the goal that we want. Do you feel like that was the case for you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, and that's not being like disappointed or upset with who I am as a human being prior to prior to this, obviously no. at all. <laughs> um, but you know, uh, yeah, as someone who, <laughs> oh my god, this is telling. As someone who, whenever I did calls, would write down the details on post-it notes, and I had like forty post-it notes on my desk in front of me, to then taking everything and putting it in an Excel spreadsheet, like that that kind of change is like significant. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that definitely takes that definitely takes personal discipline and awareness, right? To like to know and to be aware to like say, I'm on a call, okay, great. So I have to open this up and take these notes down and be here. I have to put it into this system in order to maintain future sanity and future happiness, right? And sort of it, it has made me more forward thinking. Um, at least in business. I don't know about personal, I still might not be very far thinking personally. But definitely in business it, it has made me more, more forward thinking. Yeah. Yeah, we talk a lot about this in, in the program, obviously, you know, the importance of having routines and systems and, you know, not just systemizing uh, the client side of things or like getting the client side of things, but also just systemizing life, making it, you know, set, making yourself more efficient so you can get more out of yourself and really grow your business like you want to, because like you kind of alluded this to before, before, but like, you know, you your results have been amazing, dude, in the last month. And we're going to get into that. And, you know, it's, it's, I think there's, it's not a coincidence that, you know, you were like, okay, I, I made this investment. I'm going all in on this thing. And I'm going to like, I'm, I'm going to make some changes, not just professionally, but also like in my personal life to support those professional goals. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's awesome, man. So, yeah. So like the first thing you started doing was like, one of the things that we do in the program is first thing we get you to do is show you how to get clients organically. Right. Yeah. And so how was that your experience kind of with that? It was good. I mean, you know, I, I talked about this a little bit earlier, but it's like scary to reach out to people for something that is as vulnerable as their wedding. And especially, I mean, it's COVID, right? So like that, especially right. during all this. Time. And with that is, and I don't know how my introduction into all of all of this organic concept would have worked if I if it hadn't been during COVID because actually COVID made it much more accessible because it made me really understand what what these brides were going through and how how tough and hard it was for them and what they were struggling with and it actually really allowed me to sympathize in an instant where I wouldn't usually right like you know you hear not 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 that I wouldn't sympathize but actually having these cancellations actually creates a huge problem and heartache for a lot of them. And, and it actually, it really did help me to sympathize with them. And in learning how to sympathize with them, I was able to, to connect with them and understand exactly what it was they wanted and who they were. And that was only achieved through organic, right? Because if I don't like, just if I send an ad out and someone clicks on it, I don't really know what that person is struggling with. I don't really know what that person wants, right? I, I've tried, if they've clicked on what I want, so like I have some idea. But really having hands-on, hands experience of building that group, filling it, sending messages out, it keeps me active in the, it's kept me active in the community, it's kept me active directly one-on-one -on -one with them. Um, and it's really allowed me to to understand that market. And that's, and that's what's super important about doing organic work. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Like very often I'll just start conversations with people organically yeah. without even if I'm not even necessarily thinking about getting them as a client just to deepen that relationship with your platform you know awesome yeah. so okay so you, after you know you started going through the training started doing this organic stuff um, at first you felt like man this feels really weird putting myself out there in a new way I know a lot of photographers feel that way like we're so used to like in our industry kind of like hanging back and like, you know, having, uh, waiting for like inquiries to show up in the inbox. And now you're kind of going out, you're putting yourself out there. Um, then what happened? Uh, then I, then I, I guess I started 
yeah, I started conversations and communications with um, some of those people in those groups, you know, addressing issues, listening to their problems, hearing what they wanted. Um, and then I was able to get them on some calls. Um, and, um, you know, some of them ended up being busy or, or not, you know, or, or, um, or having friends who ended up being photographers or whatever, whatever it ended up being like that happened for sure. But then also people started to book with me and then, you know, uh, and that was really cool. Um, so I think of the three that I booked that first month, um, I think it was, I think one was organic and two, actually, so I had four because two were technically organic, but I had a scheduling conflict and I had to. Oh, that's right. So you booked four weddings in, in July. Yes. That's what I booked four. And keep in mind, like in July, I mean, if I started at the end of June, I didn't, I didn't really start reaching out. I was accumulating organic connections for a week, two weeks. So it really, it's looking at like, 20, you know, 16 to 20 days, within 16 to 20 days that I accumulated really those four leads. Those four right? clients. Or those, sorry, not leads, four clients. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In like two weeks, basically. Yeah. And so, yeah. So some of those you said were, you got those organically, right? So yeah. like just for people listening, cause I think this will be helpful. Like when you say you got those clients organically, can you just like step us through what that process really looked like for you? Yeah. Um, so I think someone, you know, whatever group, I, whatever Facebook group I was in at the time, I think someone posted that they either had to reschedule that or they had been, been having issues with vendors or for some reason I reached out to them and I said, you know, hey, um, I'm here, happy to talk, um, whatever you want. And they just kind of went in on what they've been struggling with, what they're looking for, what they want. Uh, and I just kind of, I, you know, I, I didn't push any product or anything like that. I just said, hey, cool. Um, you know, if you want, we have a Facebook group. You can just jump right in. Um, you know, I run this group. It's no vendors, all just all brides and, and me. Just an opportunity for people to talk and connect to real people because I know it can get overwhelming if you just get hit in the face with, with the product. Um, and then I kept posting stuff. She kept commenting and engaging. Um, and I reached back out. I said, hey, is there anything you need? And she was like, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to kind of hear about you know, I mean, I know you're a photographer. I'd love to kind of hear what your thoughts are on this. And I'd be like, well, great. If you want to hop on a, on a quick a quick chat, we can kind of set some things up. Um, and something that I do, not, I, I don't know. But something I do is I, 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 I use Pinterest a lot. So I set up Pinterest boards for a whole variety of styles. Because, you know, as photographers, we all have our own unique identities. And, you know, so what I did is I said, cool, I have some ideas. I'm gonna do, what I'm going to do is set up a Pinterest board for you. Let you take a look at this Pinterest board. Uh, and you can tell me what you like, and you can add whatever you want to. And um, so wow. she, start, she started adding stuff to it that she liked, her color schemes and everything like that. And that kind of gave me an idea. And I was like, great, well, cool. We can follow, uh, if you want, you know, we can get your fiance, and we can kind of have a full, more, you know, more complete consultation and really talk about setting up, you know, um, everything that it is that you kind of want. And, um, and she was like, great, set the consultation up. Um, really, really, really nice couple. Uh, uh, we talked, you know, again, uh, with, I, I kind of heard what they wanted. I, I kind of heard about their story and everything that made them, made them unique. And that was really fun. It's always, I really always enjoy getting to learn who the couple is and, and what exactly they're going to be like, like and what their personalities are and everything like that. Um, and, um, yeah, then, then we talked a little bit about the Pinterest and what I saw on that. And then I said, okay, cool. I see that on your Pinterest and like reflected that in, in what I had on my portfolio when I screen shared and, and showed them my portfolio, showed them my portfolio and they, I said, oh yeah, that's I mean that's exactly in line with like what we were putting up there. That's so cool that you, you have that right there. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And like anything else you're looking for. Um and that was great. And then, you know, um they really seemed interested and so we talked about pricing and everything like that. Um and um yeah, I mean do you want me to go specifically into like the whole and what I did for pricing and everything like that or like No, I mean I think that's great. Like it's just it's it's cool to hear how you just went out, brought a stranger into your funnel, into your sales process, really understood what she wanted, what they needed, offered to give them some help, and just turned, like I say, like a stranger into yes. a high paying wedding client. Like yeah. just yeah. out of out of nothing, right? Just out of thin air, <laughs> just using your laptop, right? Absolutely. Like tools anyone can use. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. Um 
Okay, cool. So, but then you, you also started running some ads, right? Mm -hmm. So you had the kind of the organic stuff going, you spent some time like really dialing in that. Um, and then you started running ads. So can you share a little bit about like what that was like going through that, setting that up, like getting the tech set yeah. up? Yeah, the, the tech set up. So I've, I've always been good with technology, so that was cool. Um, getting the tech set up was, uh, I mean, it was all sort of right in front of me. If you, if you kind of follow the guidelines of the program step by step, then when you reach the ad component, it's all set up for you. You have the, the avatar. You have who you're looking for, what your what your target is, what your message is, and you know. By that time, you spend so much time learning and getting to know these people organically that you can't not know what they want, right? Because how would you have conversations with these people if you had no idea what they wanted? Like that would just not work well. So you inevitably end up knowing exactly what it is they want. And so for me, it was structuring and finding the right images to to pair with that, you know. A, B testing a lot of different sort of things as far as what the best headline is. Because for me, it's really important that I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a salesman, right? Like I, I, I guess unfortunately I am. And I say unfortunately, like that's like, this is like plague, sin, death word or whatever. Um, but it's not, but, um, but that was definitely a sticking point for me as far as in the organic and in, and in, and in the paid ads, right? It was like that I want, I just want to be your friend as opposed to your salesman. <laughs> now, it's funny though, sorry to interrupt, but like it's funny because that's really, that's really what sales is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like at the deepest level, it really is like connecting with somebody heart to heart and like giving them what they want. But for some reason, we all have these hangups. Like I think it's like blame it on like Scrooge McDuck or like whatever. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like it's always like the rich guy is always the bad guy. So you're like, oh, I'm taking it. It's a weird thing. Um, but yeah, I, it's, it's, it's about connecting with people and if you can help them, you show them how. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so I started, I started running ads for, for wedding stuff and that was great. Um, I got a lot of sort of contacts and, you know, again, I was always trying to find out optimizing between the advertisement or the, the lead or whatever it was, you know, what's the best headline? What's the best website? And I didn't use ClickFunnels and I wanted to stay on Wix. And the thing that's been great about staying on, staying on my site, whatever you use, is that it organically drove up the traffic on my website, which then made me a hot ticket item just to like, when, when you get Google search, people realize like Google realize like, Oh, this is, people go to this website. Um, More authority. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so, you know, uh, yeah, just more traffic, more, 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 more updates. So, you know, naturally it, it got ranked and showed higher. Um, and so, yeah, so people, people kept applying to ads and then I sent out text messages. Um, I mean, I only, I only took in about 20, I think is all I took in, um, for that, Wait, for that on, James, short what? period that I was Sorry, one sec. You just broke up. Do you mind saying that again? Yeah, so all I was saying is I, I took in maybe for that – in that first advertisement period, I took in maybe 20 leads total, um, uh, of which I reached out to all 20 of them. Um, and then of those 20, I had consultations with – yes, three, of which I booked two. So my numbers are my numbers are lower as far as what I actually like from communication to that from com, from like reaching out via the message into uh, into actually like getting consultations with them. But my closing rate was really good, which was awesome. Um, so so that was yeah that was really good. Um, but. It's a matter of, you know, I mean, again, I only ran those for maybe 10, 10 days before I started being like, cool, I've booked three in that, and that kind of like puts a lot in my calendar, right? So I had some limitations as far as what could happen in the future, so I, that's kind of why I stopped that. Then I quickly rescheduled, and I was like, cool, well, if they're, if, if I'm meeting them and like going to do engagements with them, um, then what will happen is, what if I get them in the step ahead? What if I go to proposals and I get them for proposals? If I get them for proposals, I, I'm pretty, pretty much... 100% sure I'm going to keep them through the wedding. 
Um, so I started putting out pictures for, for proposals, and I took in ten leads, and I scheduled, I, I booked maybe two two proposals out of ten out of ten leads for that, and that was great. Um, and then I just kind of kept testing my boundaries and testing my limits, and I started structuring ads for micro weddings, um, and I had to sort of design everything for micro weddings, design a website, design a landing page, design thank that, thank you, you know, and all of that stuff. Um, and then I, you know, maybe ran. I got eight leads on that. I think I booked two out of the eight that I, I led there, right? So it was like, um, again, I was just kind of testing what my what my possibilities were with each one of these ads and each one of these sort of systems and seeing. And then, of course, I come to this month and I, I set up a boudoir funnel. Um, and that was crazy. So in, in a week, in a week, I got 60 leads. Um, I haven't reached out. I've only reached out to one person. Um, in that ad, and there was a nine hundred and fifty dollar boudoir session for a technically, I guess, two dollar lead. So it's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, and I still have fifty nine leads that I can reach out to, probably more at this point. Um, but yeah, so it's it's a system that really really works, and it's 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 the ads the ads have been ads have been great, and it has unfortunately made me neglect the organic, which is a bomb, but. Um, but after a while, you sort of realize the cost return, like the the cost basis of like what it takes to spend time doing organic versus versus just having a paid ad. Which if you can hit at two dollars per per client, like maybe it's okay not to do organic for a little. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that that's kind of the whole that's kind of the whole process for ads and where they've kind of led to now. That's awesome. Yeah, so um, let's get into just like your results in July. So how much revenue, total revenue, did you do in your business this last month? Yeah, so total revenue, I was right under 20000 I was like 19000 Okay. So first of all, congrats on that, man. That's amazing, right? So like, amazing. yeah, when we started working together in 2019, what was your business at for the year? 50 50, so you were at like 50k in this last month during COVID, you did about twenty thousand dollars in one month. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah awesome. during during COVID. That yeah during during COVID. How about that? Yeah, exactly. Right, that's amazing, man. Seriously, yeah. and it's a test. It's a testament to you and like your you know the effort that you put into this and your drive and um, how you connect and work with clients. It's uh, that's awesome. So. Okay, so there's something you said. Oh, when we started this conversation, you were saying like one of the big problems that you wanted to solve was to just attract like a different caliber. Do you feel like of client? Do you feel like now you're doing that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think inevitably when you structure a lead that says you'll get something for free, you're going to get a variety of people who are going to want to click on. And so, you know, the people who don't necessarily need for some, need something for free won't click on that. And obviously a lot of people who do want something for free will click on it. But there's still that median range right in the middle um, that, that gives you control over that. And the specificity of that depends exactly on, like, your target message and, and how you choose, to, um, how you choose to, to address people. And it's the language that you use in it. It's the images. So... If you can if you can create a message that that resonates with a person who appreciates good photography, uh, inevitably there will be a person there who who sees the value, the inherent value in that, and inevitably is willing and comfortable paying more for it because it matters to them that much more. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's like you, the people who it the the quality of the work and the messaging like that that resonates with like you might get a lot of people coming in but then you focus in on the people that you really want to work with that look like the ideal client for you and you're able to get that like amazing ROI. Yeah. So wait, but dude, by the way, you also booked a fourth phantom wedding, right? Yeah. And then there was some scheduling thing that happened. So really you're really like over 20k. I am. I am. I am technically over 20k. I, I guess. Yes, that's true. <laughs> I am. I that would have been. Yeah, that would have put me at probably at 22. Well, uh, yeah, 22. 
Yeah. And so, like, basically, you booked this wedding, you booked this client, and then, like, what I happened? Mean, I made it uh, stupidest thing in the world. So I made it all the way through the process, and, like, they were great, and I'm super excited to work with them because they were going to they were gonna do Star Wars wedding. It was going to be so much fun. It would have been awesome. Ah. But uh, I, I booked them, and I just sent the client, they're like, are you available for this date? I was like, yep, available for that date. So we're totally good. Then my wife came down and told me, or, like, then she saw that I put that on the calendar. She's like, James, we're going to be in France then. And I, and I was I like, wait, that. wait, why wasn't it on our calendar? And she's like, oh, I didn't invite you yet. I'm like, no. So, so that, yeah, that's the fourth fandom wedding. that, that Are I, you going to have your associate go shoot that? Um, so I hadn't, I hadn't had that set up. I hadn't had the associate set up at that point, And I felt so mortified that I just gave them to a great photographer by who I love and trust. And I was just like, just, here you go. I feel help, some, help somebody out. Yeah. I, exactly, like, I'm so sorry that I had to put you through the, the happiness of getting a, a photographer booked and then not. Um, and it wasn't only until afterwards that I sort of <clears throat> figured out how I could have kept them in the business. But, you know, you live and you learn. It's a learning one. experience because now you've, you've since brought on, like, another shooter in your company. Yes, I have, I have, I have begun that conversation. Again, mine's a little bit my, – my circumstances are a little bit differently with how I schedule acting, right? Because yep. uh, acting scheduling coincides very much so with wedding scheduling. So finding out how to sort of upscale and maintain that personal connection has definitely been something that I've been looking into. Yeah. Cool. So, okay. A couple of last sort of questions for you. I mean, yeah. it's been amazing to, to see you like progressing and, um, you know, seeing the results that you're getting. If, if there's somebody listening right now, you know, that is thinking about taking, taking the leap, joining us in next level and, um, you know, taking their business to that next level, what like but there may be a little bit on the fence right what would you say to that person right now um i mean i was like i'm trying to think of a phrase that's other than next level but the reality is it's like <clears throat> if you're if you're even considering these conversations, you're at a point where you want more out of your business and you're searching for something and you know, whether that is a greater income or better clientele, um, change will have to happen and you can hack through the weeds and try and find that on your own and maybe you'll strike gold, maybe you'll hit something, but it is kind of crazy how well next level photography enables photographers to achieve what it is that they're looking for. Whether they even know what it is they're looking for out of business or not, you're able to, you're able to achieve so much more because of the tools you're given. Because it's not just like a one-time off advertising. It's, it is tools that go with you forever. And I've scaled them from proposals to mini sessions to the boudoir, right? And, and I'm thinking about scheduling all the way up for through all the way up through to like business headshots and everything like that. Like it is a it is a training methodology and mindset that travels with you for the rest of your life, even into how I interact with people um, on a daily basis in the audition room as an actor. So it's like this travels with you forever for the rest of your life. And so it's not only upgrading your photography business; it's upgrading the way you interact with people on a daily life in the world inevitably leads you to have probably more significant connections and, and understandings um, with other people, just in general, outside of the business. So if you're ready to kind of make a, a promise to yourself to improve fully from toe to head your entire self, then I'd say that's the best way I can go about doing it is working with the next level. That's awesome. Yeah, so like... When we were talking like for a couple minutes before we, we jumped on and started recording and we were talking about how, you know, you were saying you were considering learning, you were considering 
like hiring somebody to do this yeah. stuff for you, right? Yeah. And ultimately, you decided to learn how to do it yourself in your own business. Yeah. What do you think the benefit of that is? Yeah, well, um, I mean, exactly. It's so time and face between having someone who runs an ad campaign for a finite amount of time and I spend that same amount of money on this, but it ends at the end of the day. I have no more skills that I've learned. It's simply a matter of maybe I've got great clients, maybe I got great results, maybe like I spent less time, less personal time invested in this process and got a great return. But that expires. You run out of that. That's something you that's a machine you have to keep feeding, right? But once you have these skills, I mean it's that it's that, you know, that that motivational poster that hangs in your elementary school room, right? Give a man a fish he eats for a day, teach a man a fish he eats for life, right? It's like But that's what it is. It's it's you know, I, I now am equipped with the skill set and my, uh, the mentality to achieve and to do all of this. And I don't have to rely on anyone else anymore. Yeah. And then it's also interesting because we were talking about how, you know, a lot of photographers think like, well, yeah, I could invest money into learning those skills or I could buy a new camera. Yeah. Right. And what would you say to somebody that's in that situation that wants to grow their business, but they're like, but I, I could get, I could buy like, uh, you know, some, some new glass or like a new body or something. Like, what would you say to that person? <laughs> Straight up. It's like, you know, if you have the money to spend on the lens or the money to spend on the camera, but no one to take a picture of, why does it matter? <laughs> right? Like this, this has put people in front of me to take pictures of, and maybe I only have a $50 camera. And the ten dollar lens, which I don't, by the way. But at least I have people to take picture of, pictures of, you know, who are going to pay me for my services and, and the work, and pay me what they think it's worth and what what we collectively think it's worth. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Well, James, it's been great chatting. Um, last question for you is: so, you know, you've seen the other members in Next Level, and you've seen some of the challenges that they face on a daily basis, some of the things yeah. that they they struggle with. Um, what would your number one piece of advice be to, you know, maybe other photographers in next level, uh, just to help them? Be patient with yourself. Um, it all takes time and, you know, yeah, just like failure happens in our mind in like 10 seconds and we and that's what we hold on to but the reality is like when you think you're failing in that immediate moment you take a take a look and three days later you're having great successes so don't let don't let the immediate fear of like what is or isn't working or the successes that you see in that group that are happening for other people that aren't maybe immediately happening for you or in that moment happening for you don't let that influence you only let that show as potential for what will come that's good advice yeah. All right, cool, man. Well, so we're going to put this online. You know, I'm sure it's going to inspire a lot of people to, to take action in growing their photography businesses. And um, if somebody wants to, to reach out to you, maybe they want to schedule a session, uh, w whatever it is, could be boudoir, you know, um, proposal. What's the best way for someone to get in touch with you? Uh, yeah, so you can just reach me at jameskernphotography at gmail.com or you can just go to my website at jkern. K E R N photography dot com. Awesome, dude. Or Instagram. J wait. J K underscore photography. Right on there. <laughs> well, um, that's awesome. And uh James, I want to thank you again for hopping on today. And uh, it's been a real pleasure, man. I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing. I know this is just the beginning for you. And uh, you're well on your way, man. You know, twenty K in a month, you're well on your way to to shattering that six figure goal. And um, it's been an inspiration to, to watch you, man. And uh, I look forward to continue working with you. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Peter. It's been great. And uh, yeah, I'll see you around. All right, pal. Talk soon.